Peace. What is up, my conscious creators? Today, I'm going to show you my most popular audio rack in Ableton Live 10. This small rack opens up all the major parameters I want to tweak on any new track. EQ, compression, saturation, distortion, limiting, and volume control. Stick around after the video if you want to hear about an Ableton Live production retreat I am hosting in Cabo, Mexico, coming up in August. Visit the website, themiraclemomentretreat.com, and stick around to the end of this video for more details. But for now, let's jump into it. All right, welcome to my studio. Like I said, I'm going to show you my Ableton Live audio rack that I use on all of my tracks. So first, I'm just going to show you what it does. And then next, I'm going to show you how to make it. And then last, I'm going to show you how to make this your default audio or MIDI track so that all you have to do is load up a new audio or MIDI track. And this plugin will already be on there with all of these parameters set and ready to go. So to begin, I'm going to show you this beat, this very generic beat I've made. And on this hi-hat track, which is my first track, I'm just going to show you what this rack does, OK? So here we go. Let's play the audio. First, you got a high pass filter knob. Then you got a low pass filter knob. Notice that when I turn these, they actually turn on and off when they're in their maximum or minimum position. Then you got this glue knob, which does a little bit of threshold and makeup movement. The attack and release knob actually move in opposite directions. So you can have a fast attack and slow release or a slow attack and fast release. The saturator knob moves the drive and the output of the saturator. And when I turn the knob all the way down, the saturator plugin turns off. Same thing for this drive filter knob. The drive filter is a distortion that's coming from this auto filter that we have over here. Doesn't sound very good on hi-hats. And last, last two things is a limiter. And then master volume control. And when the master volume gets all the way down at its minimum, it engages the mute. So it actually mutes the sound. Okay. So that is how the audio rack functions. So in order to show you how this works, I'm going to delete and start from brand new track and show you how I made this. All right, so I've got a brand new track here with no audio effects loaded. I'm going to op up, open up my plugin section and I'm going to just start searching for and dragging in the plugins that I want to use in this audio rack. So first I'm going to search for EQ. I'm going to bring down the EQ8. Then I'm going to search for compressor and drag in the glue compressor. Then I'm going to search for saturator. Next up is the auto filter, which we're going to use the drive from this auto filter. Next is the limiter. And last we have the utility, which we're going to use for master gain control. All right, now all you got to do is click on any one of these, hit Command A to select them all, and then Command G will group them all into an audio rack. And then over here, we have these knobs, the macro knobs become available. So next up, we got to start right clicking and assigning parameters from these plugins to be moved and operated via these macro controls. So in order to have things labeled really clearly, I'm just going to start by labeling my macros. So on macro one, I'm going to hit command R for rename. I'm going to call this knob low cut. On macro two, rename high cut. Macro three is going to be glue. Macro four is going to be attack slash release. Macro five is going to be our saturator. Macro six is going to be our drive filter. That's filter coming from our, or that's drive coming from the auto filter. Macro seven is going to be our limiter. And macro eight is going to be our master volume level. Next up, we just want to start right clicking the parameters that we want to assign to these individual knobs. 
So for our low cut, we're going to move to this EQ. I'm going to turn off the EQ points number two and three. On EQ point number one, I'm going to make this a high cut. And then on the frequency, I'm going to map that to the low cut. I did say high cut. I meant low cut, sh high cut shelf. I don't know exactly what that's called. And then, uh, yeah, so the frequency is now mapped to the low cut knob. We also want to map this on off to the low cut knob. And we're going to do the same thing here with our EQ point number four. Turn that into a low cut shelf. Right click on the frequency, map that to the high cut. Right click on the on off and map that to the high cut. Now these knobs do not work the same just yet. And that is because we're going to have to go into this map mode and start adjusting our parameters. But before we do that, let's finish out the assigning. So on this glue knob, I want to assign the threshold and I also want to assign the makeup. For the attack and release knob, I want to assign the attack and I want to assign the release. For the saturator knob, I want to assign the drive. I want to assign the output so we can duck the output. And then also I'm going to right click on the on off button here and I'm going to assign that to the knob as well. For the auto filter, I want to leave the frequency all the way up. I don't want to filter anything here. I'm just going to choose this uh, distortion setting PRD and then we get this drive knob, which I'm going to right click and put on our drive filter knob. Our limiter, we're going to right click on the gain, map to the limiting knob. And for the utility, we're going to right click on gain, map to master. And we're also going to right click on the mute and map that to the master. Okay, now all of the knobs have been assigned with the individual parameters we want them to change, but now we've got to go into map mode in order to actually define the parameters of what these knobs are gonna do. And that is really easy. All we gotta do is click here on this map button, and then here are all of our map parameter settings. So we're just gonna start at the top, and I'm gonna enter in all of the parameter settings that I have in my rack. Hopefully this will teach you exactly what the rack is doing as well as show you how you can customize this rack to your own liking. Now keep in mind you can get this rack as a free download in the description down below. And also if you come to the Miracle Moment Retreat, which is coming up in August down in Cabo, Mexico, I'm going to be teaching how to make this rack at the retreat. And I'm also going to be teaching how to make other racks that I have in my workflow. But for now, let's just dive into these map settings. So starting from the top and moving our way down, the attack and release knob is up first. We want the minimum of our knob to be at 30. And we want the maximum of our knob to be down to 0 0.01. And now this release knob, we want to start at 0.2 and our maximum is gonna be 1.2. And now let's just look at our attack and release knob. As I move this knob up and down, as it goes up, the attack time gets shorter and the release time gets longer. As the knob goes down, the attack time gets slower and the release time gets faster. So we have these knobs moving in opposition to each other and it makes this one knob very functional. Next up, we have our auto filter. I'm gonna start here with the drive parameter. We want this drive parameter to be at zero when the knob is at its minimum and 24 when the knob is at its maximum. But what we also wanna do is turn the plugin off when the knob is at its minimum. So right here, I'm going to put the number one on the minimum and leave the maximum at 127. So now let's look at our drive filter knob. When I turn it on, the plugin should also turn on and the drive filter goes all the way up 24 dB. And then as I turn it all the way back down, the plugin goes off. Perfect. Next up, we have the glue threshold and makeup. The threshold, when the knob is at its minimum, we want it to be doing nothing. So we're going to put the threshold at zero. When the knob moves up, we want to bring our threshold down negative 22 dB. And at the same time, when the knob moves, we want our makeup to change. So the minimum is going to be left at zero. And instead of making up 20 dB of gain, I want to make up only 4 dB of gain. So now let's look at our glue knob. When I turn it on, the threshold comes down negative 22% and the makeup gain goes up 4 dB. 
Okay, now let's look at the high cut knob. The frequencies are already set correctly. We want a minimum of 10 hertz and a maximum of 22,000 hertz, but we want it to turn on the moment that we engage the knob. So for the minimum here, I'm gonna set this number to 127, and the maximum I'm gonna set to 126. It seems a little bit confusing, but check out what it does. Look at the high cut knob. The moment I pull it down, it turns on and the filter begins. And as soon as I bring it all the way back up, boom, the filter actually turns off, which is super nice. It keeps our mix very clean. Next up, we have the limiter gain. When the knob is at its minimum position, we want the gain to be doing nothing. So I'm gonna put it at zero dB. And as you turn the knob up, we're gonna have a maximum of 24 decibels of limiting. Next is the low cut knob. Very similar to the high cut knob, the frequency settings are already correct. We just wanna change the on off position. The minimum is gonna get the value number one and the maximum we're gonna leave at 127. So let's look at the low cut knob. As I turn it on, boom, it, it engages. We can filter all the way up. When I bring it all the way back down, boom, it turns off, super cool. Next up is the master. When the master is all the way down, the knob master all the way down, we want that minimum value to be set at all the way down, infinite negative volume. When we turn the knob up, we only want it to come up to zero dB. We're just using this as a volume reducer. So now check the master knob. When I move it, we're all the way up to zero dB. When I move it down, we're all the way down to negative infinity. But likewise, when we move the knob all the way down, I actually want to engage the mute because sometimes some sound actually leaks through. So in order to do that, we're gonna set the minimum value at 127 and the maximum value at one. That way when our knob is all the way up, the mute is off. And as we turn our knob all the way down, there you go, the mute engages. The last three things we have to set are for the saturator. The moment we engage the knob, we want it to turn on. So I'm gonna set the value to one. We want the knob to move the drive only from zero dB maximum to like 24 dB. Likewise, we want our output to actually be ducking. So we're gonna have our minimum value at zero dB and maximum value, we're gonna bring it down by 12 dB, negative 12. So now let's look at our saturator knob. As we turn it, the plugin turns on. When we get all the way up to full values, our drive has been turned up 24 dB and our output has been turned down negative 12 dB. All right, then let's click the map mode to get out of map mode and now everything works appropriately. Now, before I save this rack as a preset, I wanna actually organize it visually to how I wanna see it every time I load in the preset. I don't really need to see the saturator, so I'm gonna double click on that, collapse it. I don't need to see the auto filter, double click, that collapses it. And I don't care about seeing the master level, so I'm gonna double click and that collapses that window. Basically, all I wanna see is my EQ, my compressor, and my limiter. Next, I'm gonna name the rack by clicking here and hit Command R for rename. I like to put in brackets. I do bracket zero one bracket. And what that does is when I'm organizing it via alphabetical organizing in the, in the window, it puts this right at the top because it's got that number right at the beginning. Next, I'm going to label this EQ comp saturation limiting. And then I'm gonna put Oneno and number two because I've made this before. All right, then now that it's named, all I gotta do is click this little save icon and there you see it right there. It's gonna save it, I'm gonna hit enter. And then for organization purposes, I have my own folder up here titled Oneno. Now I'm gonna take my audio rack, which is right here, and I'm just gonna move it into my own folder. And there you see it right there. This is the one that we just made, EQ Comp Saturation Limiting Oneno number two. Another quick tip is if you right click here in Ableton 10, you have these folder like color icons that you can use. I'm going to call this one blue. And then when we go look in our blue favorites section, we are going to see the one that I had originally. And this is the new one, Oneno number two. So now it's super easy. Let's say you drag in a new bit of audio. Let's create a new track. This new track now has no audio effects here. So I'm going to take my preset and just drag it down here. And boom, now I have all of these parameters mapped and ready to go for me to tweak and mix this individual track exactly how I want it in my mix. 
And now here's the final step. In order to make this track come up automatically with each new track that you're making, all you gotta do is one little secret thing. On this new audio track, we have the rack already set up. I'm gonna change some of these settings just a little bit to my liking for how I would like them to load each time I make a new track. I'm gonna make my limiter around 5 dB of limiting, and I'm gonna have my master be around negative 10. I do that on all of my tracks, that way I know that I have clean signal actually going to the master of my song. And now with these parameters set how I want them, I'm going to click over here on the audio track, right click, and at the very bottom you see save as default audio track. Now each time I make a new track by hitting command T, it's loaded exactly that way. And you can see if I change these parameters around and then load a new track, Boom, this new track now has those settings exactly as I saved them. You can do this exact same process for a MIDI track. To get a new MIDI track, do Command Shift T. Now it says that there's no instruments or audio effects here, but this is really easy. Open up your plugin window, grab your preset, drop it down here on the MIDI track. And what's cool is it's still waiting over here for a MIDI instrument, but this, but all of these audio effects are now loaded to the default positions on this track. So then I go over here to my MIDI, my MIDI track, right click, save as default MIDI track. And there you go. Now each time I open up a new MIDI track, I'm going to do a new one, Command Shift T. This new one now has all that same stuff. Master's been turned down a little bit, limiting at five, and it's still waiting for an instrument right here. So it's preset, ready for me to go, speeds up my workflow so freaking fast and I use this all the time. The last thing you should know is that when you make this your default audio track, especially when you're working with a bunch of stems, let's say you're trying to import 30 stems at one time, it'd be a pain in the ass to drag and drop this plugin 30 times on each individual track. But the cool thing by making it your default audio track setting is that when I take 30 stems, drag them into Ableton and just drop them on the in the arrangement window, it creates 30 new tracks instantly and all 30 of those tracks have this rack on there. So just that one time saver alone, I can't even tell you how much time that saved me, probably hours when it comes to how much time it takes out of my mix to just drag and drop those plugins. Once again, you can find a free download of this audio rack in the description down below. The Miracle Moment is a holistic retreat for artists, producers, and songwriters who want to deepen their knowledge of Ableton Live and also Ableton's controller called The Push. It'll be a five-night retreat hosted by myself and my good friend, Alux. Go to the website www.themiraclemomentretreat.com for more information and to find the application form for the retreat. Thank you so much for watching, and until I see you again along the journey, Oneness in sound, I am Oneno. Peace.